Hello and welcome to Weathersnap. It's the 31st of March 2023. It's a Friday and I'm Claire Nazir. And I'm Alex Deakin. Thanks for joining us. It's a stormy one this week, Claire. What have we got coming up? Well, this week we're going to be talking to Professor Lizzie Kendon about her latest report, which is just incredible. It's a hundred year projection of the state of thunderstorms across the UK using an incredibly high resolution model. Really interesting stuff coming out of uh, our Hadley Centre and our climate scientist uh, Lizzie Kendon telling us all about that. And of course, we've had a named storm this week, Storm Matisse, named by the French Weather Service, Meteo France, because they experienced some of the strongest winds from that. But that storm did cause some issues uh, across the UK as well. So more about that in a moment. But first, at the end of last week, tragedy hit Mississippi with at least 23 people being killed after a tornado outbreak and severe storms swept across the US state. It's just horrific to see the damage. It was just so intense, so destructive. People were missing. There were rescue teams just combing through the destruction, just looking for survivors as the storm struck Silver City in western Mississippi. And in fact, this year across the US already, there have been more than 300 tornadoes and 31 deaths. And according to the Storm Prediction Center, the data there suggesting that it's the third most active start to the season since records began. It's just awful conditions, Alex. Yeah, you normally think of, you know, the peak tornado season late April into May, don't you? But it it just seemed that every year now we're getting more and more of these happening in March. It just seemed to be sparking off a little bit earlier. But yeah, particularly this year here has been uh, horrific with over, I think it's 311 tornadoes so far, but more to come. Yeah, more to come. And we're, we're talking Friday um, during the morning here in the UK. Obviously, some parts of the US waking up to yet again some violent conditions. And it's a dangerous pattern which has been evolving through the last few weeks. And it's we were talking about this earlier, Alex, weren't we? The sort of the, the classic setup mm. for tornado outbreaks is that warm and moist air just wafting from the Gulf of Mexico. And then, you know, that cold air driving down from Canada and it's where it, it meets is really the clash, the battlefield. Yeah, and you've got that three dimensional aspect. So it's the low level, those winds at the low level coming up from the warm Gulf of Mexico. And then you've got those higher level winds coming in from the northwest. So you've got the warm air at the bottom uh, and you've got colder air at the top. And of course, they want to they want to balance things out. The warm air just wants to rise and the cold air wants to sink. And so everything just gets really, really active. And then you combine that with uh, the power of the sun. So as the sun gets higher in the sky at this time of year, you know, the planes just warm up and that you know generates more warmth at low levels and the, the air just rises and it's what we call unstable very unstable weather conditions and that is the breeding ground for thunderstorms and it's of course thunderstorms which which spark the tornadoes and it, it just america that that whole, the whole geography around america is just perfectly set up for it for these storms that's why america gets more more tornadoes than than anywhere else and in fact on the news groups this week um they're describing the the jet stream as a powerhouse and obviously that adds to the the incredible forcing which increases the risk of these twisters staying on the ground for longer and that's exactly what's been happening so we're looking right now at the storm prediction center website which has got a wealth of information and obviously warnings as well which are current and have been issued regarding the risk level across the us through the next few days and there's a couple of red areas isn't there alex yeah, it's a really huge area covering, the, you know, the whole of the warning. It, it covers pretty much the whole right hand side of the United States. Don't you? I mean, a lot of that is in the green zone, but we do have the 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 orange and the red zones levels, levels three and four. And that, those red zones in particular covering uh, you know, parts that were affected last week uh, uh, and then a, another area further north. So there's two kind of bullseye red areas that are the, the highest risk from these uh, tornadic outbreaks uh, later on Friday. But it's not just the tornadoes either, you know, the strong winds anyway, large hailstones uh, also likely to cause some problems and the heavy rain likely to cause some flooding also. Yeah, so the severe, the most severe risk is along the eastern side of Iowa, western Illinois border and into the region of Arkansas, again, Mississippi, you know, getting it again mm. and Tennessee and, and where Tennessee, Missouri and Illinois meet another real um, danger zone. 
And as you say, these are damaging winds here, hail, and the possibility of some severe and long track tornadoes. You know, it's a lottery in a way. It's, you know, these The path of these tornadoes can be quite narrow and some mm -hmm. places can totally miss them where just down the road you can see this trail of destruction. But it's not just about these tornadic outbreaks. On the colder side of the system, that's where we can see damaging winds as well. Yes, uh, some very lively weather conditions right away up, up to the to the northeast of the United States. We're going to see heavy rain and some some further snowfall as well. So it's it's a really interesting uh, for us meteorologists uh, going to be a really interesting spell. But you know the the number of dangers, the number of potential hazards there are, uh, just just incredible really from this developing situation. It really is very very lively, very active weather system. And you've just talked about snow and, you know, there are concerns that there could be blizzards across the eastern side of the Dakotas through the next 24 hours or so. But even further west across California, we've been talking about California for the last few weeks on weather snap and yet still the snow falls. Yes, incredible. The snow is still falling there. We mentioned it on last week's one, didn't we, how uh, heavy snow has been affecting California. And now, uh, officially, uh, California has had its largest snowpack in recorded history. Um, I think records going back to the 1950s, and it's just exceeded the previous record, which was the winter of 82 into 83. And statewide, the snowpack is an astonishing 236% uh, of normal, so more than twice. And in some places, it's nearly 300%, so almost three times the average in the southern Sierra. Now, this is, of course, causing problems, as we talked about last week, with the heavy snowfall and people having to clear it and it caving in roofs. But, it, you know, in some ways it is good news because it will relieve the drought situation. The, uh, in California, they do rely heavily on the snowpack through the winter to keep them through the long, dry summer. So... It is good news in some way, but of course, the heavy snow has itself caused some problems, but it has been incredible. As we talked about last week, just spells of wet and windy weather sweeping in from the Pacific has just dumped snowfall after snowfall. And there's still been some falling this week. Mm. Yeah. So, it, you know, there's a lot of weather going on across the US right mm. now. And in a moment, we're going to be talking about Storm Matisse, which named by the French, but certainly some lively conditions here. But before that, let's just backtrack a little bit. And as you said earlier on the show, Alex, the theme has been thunderstorms today. And in fact, I spoke to Lizzie Kendon, Professor Lizzie Kendon, just a few days ago about her latest report, which has been recently published. And it's a remarkable paper looking at the effect of climate change on the frequency of extreme rainfall events here in the UK. I caught up with her and she told me all about it. What we've done is we've produced some projections of very high resolution allowing us to look at how climate is evolving from the past to the present and right out to the end of the century, out to 2080. Um, so it's a continual 100-year time series, which is really allowing us to explore how changes in extreme rainfall will manifest through time. Now, this is critical to what happens, particularly, I'm going to say, during the summer months and convective systems and rainfall. You're saying it's a fine resolution. I mean, I've been working in weather now for 28 years, and this is something that you maybe couldn't have done even five years ago. Am I correct there? Yeah, these were actually using the weather forecast model on a climate timescale now. So we're able to look at how rainfall or temperature is changing on every single 2.2 kilometre grid box across the UK for every hour for 100 years. So there's an incredible amount of detail here. But it's, I mean, it's really important for us to have this level of detail because we made a step change in terms of our ability to represent the processes that are really important for local flash flooding type events. So we really need this high detailed simulations to really capture those with a degree of realism. Let's just backtrack a couple of years. And I remember a, an extreme storm across London where there was so much flooding and the imagery was just crazy. And it's this type of event that needs to be captured and understood because as we head towards the mid-century and beyond, the frequency of these type of, sort of deep convection thunderstorms and the amount of rainfall encapsulated, embedded within the system is going to become more frequent. Yes. Yeah, so, so the sort of event we're talking about is the event we saw, for example, back in July 2021 in London. 
then we had um, about a month's rainfall fall in three hours over Kew Gardens. It led to, you know, tube stations closed, widespread disruption. And then a couple of weeks later, there was another event, very similar, very intense downpour. We had two hospitals flooded. So these are the types of events that we're talking about here. I mean, they're, they're important in urban areas and small catchments where we're particularly vulnerable to water levels rising very rapidly, which can lead to these sort of flash floods. And so that's pretty much, I mean, you know, I know the phrase hope for the best plan for the worst. And this type of information is vital for city planners and beyond. Yeah, so a lot of urban drainage systems that we currently have are designed based on historical rainfall rates. You know, they don't have the capacity to cope with the sort of increases that we're talking about here. These new projections show us that for every single degree of warming, we're expecting a, a 5 to 15 percent increase in the intensity of these heavy downpours. So, you know, we're talking about um, needing changes in designing of the infrastructure in cities, having better drainage systems. You know, there's lots of local authorities and flood planners who need to have this kind of level of information moving through time so that they can really plan for the future. Our thanks to Professor Lizzie Kendon. So Thursday, Alex, let's just backtrack 24 hours or so. And the French named Storm Matisse. Tell me why how bad it was going to be, and what did we see in terms of that storm? Yeah, it was a pretty interesting one. This We've been picking up on this deep area of low pressure uh, from the back from last weekend. I actually spotted that some of the models have this quite deep area of low pressure heading up, and obviously uh, it's it's one of those fast developing situations that uh, you know, intensified out in the middle of the Atlantic during the early hours of, of Thursday morning. So, yes, we were tracking this low pressure from last weekend and it was going to intensify through the middle part of the week. Interaction with the jet, so a really intense bit of jet over that came out of the eastern seaboard of the United States, picked up this little low, spun it up into quite a vicious storm, actually. And then it actually moved towards the UK as a more mature feature. Now, as is often the case, the strongest winds are always on the southern flank of these low pressure systems. That's where the isobars are most closely packed and the low itself tracking across actually southern parts of England and Wales, but the strongest winds on its southern flank. So actually hitting into northern parts of France. So northern France likely to saw the, the brunt, the strongest winds, but it's always pretty coastal. So actually the strongest winds of all through the English Channel and actually on land, the winds weren't as bad, but around the coast. So we saw some effects in Cornwall and continuing through Friday right along the south coast of England, gusts of 50 and in places 60 miles an hour, 62 in Plymouth we had. The Isle of Wight recorded a gust stronger than that, but obviously that's a very exposed site and not particularly representative. I think it was 80 miles an hour in the Isle of Wight. So we have gusts of wind 60, 50, 60 miles an hour across parts of the populated south that uh, caused some problems. Trees down in Cornwall caused some travel disruption. Uh, but yes, the strongest winds were just a little further south. So northern France, the Channel Islands bearing the brunt of those strong winds. And that is why the French named that system Storm Matisse. Uh, they named it on Thursday morning with the worst impacts on Friday morning. Wow, yeah, so some lively conditions in the south. Um, it's been a really wet week as well. You know, we've had a mm. lot of rain just covering the country, uh, strong winds, particularly across the south as well as the west. Tell me, are we going to get any dry weather through the weekend and into next week? We just want to see a little bit of sunshine as we enter April. Mm, into April, school holidays as well, you know, Easter next week. So people are people are thinking a little bit more about getting outside, especially you now the clocks have gone back and the evenings are that much lighter. Is it warming up? Um, interestingly, it has been an incredibly dull March. You probably have noticed that very dull, particularly again in the south and a wetter than average month for sure. And all the stats uh, will be coming out. We'll be posting all the provisional stats for uh, for March during Friday. So check our social media channels for that. But yeah, let's look forward to April because it does look a little dry. It does look as if things will be getting a bit brighter. Uh, not necessarily warmer. Certainly this weekend, actually, temperatures will be dropping off a little bit, getting a little colder. Saturday's quite a grey day. In the wake of Storm Matisse, we're getting an easterly wind. And now this time of year, with the cold North Sea, that's going to draw in a lot of har and sea frets and quite a lot of mist on the East Coast. And actually, that's going to pep up a little bit and turn into some outbreaks of rain on Saturday in the East. An old weather front in the West providing some rain as well. So Saturday is quite a grey day, rain in places and quite cool. By Sunday, it does look drier. And that's the theme as we go into next week. So it does look as if high pressure is going to establish itself, not right over the UK, but close to the UK. Hurrah. I love April. It's one of my favourite months, actually. Is it? Mm. Mm, I just like the fan. really light. I like the fact that the mornings are getting lighter again. 
You know, I love those really early mornings where you get up and no one else is up and you can just step outside with your cup of tea, listen to the birds. And, Such and an just early to... bird. You love getting out, don't you, and going for oh, walks. Yeah. And, uh, no, not me and me. my dog. Like... Yeah. Now, Alec, I know that you studied astrophysics um, and now it's a testament to the fact that, hang on, there's someone at the door. Let me hang on. And it's a testament to the fact you're wearing a shirt with moons on it. Oh, yes. Hang on. I thought... Think about your response. I've got someone at the door. Okay. Hang on. Sorry, I thought I've got a guy coming to do some building work, but that wasn't him. It was a postman. Um, so it's good, though, isn't it? Do you like it? Yeah. Is it new? It is new-ish. Got it in the sails in January. Got the moon on the different phases of the moon. Interesting, a lot of planets visible at the moment. Shame most of us don't have clear skies, but there's a big planetary alignment. I think you can see five of the planets close by to the moon at the moment. You need a binoculars for uh, Uranus and Saturn, but I think you can see Mars and Venus reasonably clearly close to the moon at the moment. So if you do get a break in the cloud, that's always worth a look. But I did wonder where you were going with that. Yes, it's a, it's a nice kind of olive green color, isn't it? We need to get the we need to get this podcast visible, vis, visual, don't we? That's what yeah, we, need to we do. do. Just mm. so we can see what you're wearing every week, because it is really <laughs> quite impressive. And I'm, thank you for the update on the, the the moon and the planet's alignments. I've got a great app, actually, where it plays really lovely sort of spooky music, like you're floating in space. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Lovely. Nice to end on a, on, a, on a cheery note after you yeah. know, a stormy podcast great to have your company um obviously take care out there it's drying up but if you are heading over to the states please check the forecast because there's a lot of violent weather going on across some parts thank you claire yeah it's been great fun uh thanks for listening everyone and we'll see you again soon weather snap is a podcast by the uk met office For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.